This is a watermelon, and Lori's about to feed my giant tortoise later, which means we have to cut this up. Or do we? And this is Bowser. He is actually a 41-year-old snapping turtle. And I tell you what, he is getting heavy. He's over 100 pounds now. He can live over 200 years. And you know what? I think that this might be the best way to cut up that watermelon. With a bite force of over 1,000 pounds per square inch, I think he's gonna do the job. What do you say? We see what he does to this watermelon. So the hardest thing is not getting my fingers in here. Come on, Bowser, let's help cut this up. Ow, oh, ow, oh my gosh, he makes short work of this. Oh my gosh, that's like cutting through nothing. So Bowser is doing a pretty good job of this for sure. So uh, I think that this will be good and Lori should be proud of me, right? Good job, Bowser. And the truth is, it doesn't hurt Bowser to bite into a watermelon, but of course he doesn't eat watermelon, right? So we'll go ahead and get Bowser back in, and we'll give him a treat a little bit later for being such a good sport. Come on, Bowser. Back in. Oh, you are so heavy. Come on. Up you go. Oh. Whew. Some big turtle. And by the way, welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope your day is absolutely amazing. Lauren, I helped you out with the watermelon. What? I helped you out with the watermelon getting ready for Matilda. What did you do? Well, we thought that rather than you cutting up, maybe we would have Bowser help cut it for you. Are you serious? Yeah, that was Bowser. Did that. You're lying. No, I did. That was Bowser. Is that good enough or do you need more? Why would you give Bowser a watermelon? The question is why wouldn't I give Bowser a watermelon? Because that's not what they eat. No, but he, I just thought he would help cut it up. So. I didn't even yeah. understand. No, it didn't work out the way I, you weren't impressed. It was cool. I think you're lying. I swear to gosh, that's Bowser's mouth. What, was he out? And then you yeah. stuck it? Yeah. <laughs> Did he like it? I, he bit it. I don't know if he liked it. Did he spit it back out? Yeah, he spit it oh, back okay. out. Yeah. He didn't like it. Yeah. So, okay, so we're going to cut that up and feed Matilda. Okay, well, why don't we just give it to Matilda like this? All right, let's do it. Okay, Matilda feeding time. You're just going to get... Oh, I think Steve's going to yeah, get Yeah, he eat. already knows. Steve's hey, like, hey, what's up? Look what we got. Matilda's got a big old watermelon. Look what we got. Here she comes. Here comes Matilda. You're gonna like it. <laughs> she doesn't know what she wants to do. <laughs> what is she doing? I don't know. Why is she running away from it? You know it smells good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love how she raises her feet up to like... <laughs> Leverage. Of course, things like watermelon, we're only going to do that on a very rare occasion. You know, fruit really isn't that great for tortoises long term, you know, but once every month or so to give her a treat, and she seems to really love it. It's pretty cool. It's so interesting, but it seemed like Matilda was actually afraid of the entire watermelon. So Lori decided to cut it up into pieces, and I think she's going to be much happier. Not to mention, our leopard tortoises are going to get an opportunity to eat as well. And like I mentioned, I'll give Bowser a couple trees for being so good earlier and participating. There you go, bud. There you go, buddy. And of course, it's just crocodile chow, which is actually made by Missouri. It's just a manufactured food for zoo animals, of course, crocodilians. And we vary this guy's diet up a tremendous amount. And you might be wondering about that fish in there. That fish is named Jonah. Jonah has survived in there for the last probably six months, so uh, I think him and Bowser are buddies. What's interesting about Jonah, the goldfish, and Bowser is the fact that when Bowser is eating, Jonah actually goes and cleans up all the scraps. So it's a really cool symbiotic relationship. For whatever reason, Bowser doesn't seem to mind and the fish seems to be happy. All right, guys, I got Tato and we're off to a zoo to you. It's really cool as things start to slowly open up that we're starting to do zoo to yous again. After several months of really not taking the animals out at all, sure, we've had lots of in-person tours here at the Reptile but it's really cool that more and more people are starting to book because it is so fun to take these animals and see people get so much enjoyment out of them. All right, guys, catch you later. I keep telling you guys that we're in the midst of the colubrid breeding season, but I figured I'd take a minute and kind of explain what does that mean, you know? We've been breeding pythons for six months. Well, things happen a lot differently when it comes to colubrids. I mean, you guys know that these guys brumate. Now, they've been out of brumation for about two and a half, maybe three weeks, something like this. This happens to be a mosaic female cow king that is actually feeding like crazy and that's basically what the process is right they come out of brumation and basically you try to feed them as soon as they're getting warmed up and then they'll go through just like this girl here they come out and do what they call a 
post brumation shed or a pre follicle shed same thing right so basically after brumation they go through a shed about two two and a half weeks later this is not only a post brumation shed but it's also a pre follicle shed once they shed out that basically just means that they're ready to start breeding and things happen pretty quick you know like this granite max max here that is an absolute ripper I mean take a look at that thing this one shed out just about three or four days ago now what happens is, as soon as they shed out you want to start getting males and females together immediately because it happens super quick unlike the pythons that can take literally up to six months or something like that from the time you start breeding until you get egg laying basically you have a, again about two weeks they come out they do their brumation shed then after that they basically need to breed for probably three to four weeks which by the way this is a hypo Arizona mountain king snake Oh, doggy, I love that animal so much. And during that three to four week window, the follicles go from little tiny BBs up until full grown ovulations. And then they go through what they call a pre-lay shed. Again, post brumation shed, pre-follicle shed, then feed, 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 breed, breed, breed. Three to four weeks later, they go through a pre-lay shed. And then believe it or not, that quickly, seven to 10 days later, you get your first clutch of eggs. That is absolutely crazy. It happens so quick. And this will be the kind of advertising part of the vlog you can go to thereptarium.com if you want yourself a coloring book. And if you want to become part of the Reptile Army, go ahead and email us at join at reptilearmy.com. And there's still time to get Bella merch and a few other things. Link in the description if you want to pick yourself up some merch. And right now, you can get yourself some disinfect... No, I'm just kidding. That's all I have for you guys. Take a look at that, guys. You don't see Luna out that often. As a matter of fact, that's one of the hardest things about running a zoo. It's right. It's like having a really cool enclosure, but not having it so cool that you can't actually see the exhibit. Remember that scene like in uh, Jurassic Park, the movie, when they're driving around, there's no dinosaurs? Because it's just all overgrown and stuff like that. That's the hard part. Well, Luna here, of course, is an albino, high white, black and white cow king. Absolutely beautiful. But honestly, she hides almost all the time in here. So it's pretty cool to see her out this morning. Breeding snakes is literally like a kid opening Christmas gifts on Christmas morning. So the question is, today, will it be Christmas? You know I'm waiting on that pie clutch. Not today. Got my salmon bird eating tarantula. Of course, this is gonna get giant one day. It's one of the biggest tarantulas on the planet as far as heavy body. Not quite as big as the blonde diastermi, but nevertheless, we're gonna see if we can get this little monkey to eat. There it goes. Oh yeah, it took it. Oh my gosh, that thing is lightning quick. I definitely don't wanna be handling this crazy monkey. And you can already see with this female Pueblin, she's starting to look like she's filling up with eggs. Now, interestingly enough, every year, Mexican black kings and Pueblin milk snakes are our first clutch of the year. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know why they actually develop follicles quicker than other snakes, say than corn snakes, because it's always like Pueblins, Mexican black kings, cow kings, and then corn snakes are always the last one. Really weird, right? But the point is, is that it happens really quick. And the nice thing is, is that once this female goes and lays her clutch of eggs, which will probably be within the next probably two and a half, maybe three weeks tops, you can actually rebreed them. Unlike boas and pythons that only have one clutch or one litter a year, colubrids can have two clutches, and with garter snakes have two live litters per year. It's just really crazy. So again, lots of fun stuff going on with the colubrids. We're gonna have egg time coming here really soon, but I want to explain what I meant when I say we're in the colubrid breeding season, so you guys understand the process that we're going through each and every day. These green belly peel lizards are Gastrofolus persina actually are doing really well. You can see they're crushing food and we're actually starting to use these as actually feeding during open hours because they'll actually take food off of tongs too. These things are so incredible. Look at this thing that we just got from the P.O. box. This is actually from Arizona or Arkansas. I don't know what eggs are. It's, it's a giant <laughs> waffle! It's a giant waffle! Ooh, oh my gosh, give me the syrup! Quick! No, this thing is like packed. Whatever it is, it's so, probably be careful not to cut it. I've never I'm gonna guess it's I've never actually a photo. Have you ever like seen that. cardboard that thick before? Uh um, never. Yes, I have. No, you haven't, trust me. No, I have. You have not seen cardboard that thick ever. I have. You haven't though. Oh yeah, it's artwork. It's artwork. Ooh, this is nice. 
Look at that. Wait, you're wrecking something else. Look at that. That is dope. Oh, wow. Oh my God, I like that a lot. Thank you so much. That's cool. Look at the leaves are like added on after for like texture and stuff. Wow, that's actually cool. So thank you so much. And what yeah, do we got here? As well. Says remember, always be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you tomorrow. Brian Barthes, it's got Drogo, it's got all the stuff that's awesome. Here, Brian, Lori, crew, family, my husband and I love your videos. We started watching your story shortly after Karma, the first one went over the Rainbow Bridge. I painted this fan art of Karma. Thank you so much. That is so nice of you. All of you, please take care of yourself and each other. Please keep up the good work in your videos. I hope you enjoy the fan art, and I absolutely do. Thank you so much. And this is from the book, what is it? Booked out? From the book outs from Arkansas, by the way. Very so, nice. So thank you. thank you. So Bella was a cheeky little monkey today. Actually, while we were working, she jumped out of the cage onto Anthony's head, uh, which never really happens. She always just hangs out in her cage. So I don't know what she's up to today. Uh, she wants to go on a little adventure, I guess. But Bella, I love you. You gotta stay in your cage. And the thing is, we leave this enclosure open pretty much all day for her to just, you know, pop her head out and look around and stuff like that. She never really wants to come out. When we take her out, she actually gets stressed out and wants to go back in. So that was definitely pretty unusual. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor can you hit this playlist over here i really do appreciate it. on this side you can hit the subscription button turn your post notifications on have a wonderful day remember you better be kind to somebody and i'll see you tomorrow